on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Let's make sure we do all that we can do to have a magnificent Monday. I'll do everything I can during the next two hours to teach you how to master the tools for trading. And that includes the tools of the mind, because when you and I, when we can truly master the tools of our mind, we begin to think like a strategist. And that's really important as it applies to everything in life, especially trading. Unlike most who focus on tactics, you and I, we know that to really achieve our goals and our dreams, we've got to always think like a strategist. You see, tactics need a strategy, and strategies need tactics, which is why today you'll hear me use tactical terms like A to B equals CD, Fibonacci expansion and retracement, Scartley and butterfly patterns, and of course, candlesticks. The signs that the bulls and the bears make for you and I each and every trading session. But the key, the real key to trading and investing, the key to get our money to work harder for us than we do for it is to have a strategy. And that's what I call mastering probability. Because using tactics without strategy, well, it's a recipe for failure. And failure is not an option in our playbook, which is not to say we don't incur losses. Because losses are a part of any successful trading strategy. It's what we call spoilage. Just as running a household means throwing out food that has gone bad in our refrigerator. When it comes to loss, you and I, we understand that risk, risk is the, is the only thing that we can control. And we do that by always using stops. That means we have an exit strategy, one that covers both sides of the trade, one referred to as a bracketed OCO order. One cancels the other. This way... We can create a system expectancy, our ultimate confidence and performance tool when it comes to trading. So today, today and every day, let's do all that we can do to think like a strategist, because strategists will slay the tactician all day long. So let's kick things off and take a moment and review one of our tools, one of my favorite tools. It's the tool I call Become an Ant. You see, ants live by a four-part belief system, a success philosophy that I think everyone should live by, because belief number one, ants, they never quit. If an ant is headed somewhere and you try to stop it, it'll find another way. They'll climb over, climb under, they'll climb around. They keep looking for another way. Folks, never quit looking for another way to get to where it is you're supposed to go. Belief number two, ants think winter all summer long. And that's really important because summer does not last forever. Although it just began on uh, Saturday. So happy summer. But ants gather their winter food in the middle of the summer. Hmm, something to think about. Belief number three, ants think summer. All winter long. Now, I consider that to be even more important because during the winter, the ants remind themselves that this winter won't last long and soon they'll be out. And on the first warm day, the ants, they peek their head out. They peek their full body out, really. They And if, in fact, it gets cold, they dive back down in the earth. But as soon as it warms up, they cannot wait to get out. And belief number four, how much will an ant gather during the summer to prepare for winter? You've got it. All they possibly can. My friends, this is the way to live. Never give up. Always look ahead. Focus on what you want. Stay positive. And most importantly, do all you can do. It is Magnificent Monday. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, very flat market out here. Dow is flat, completely flat. It's trade at 16,857. S&P is up a point and a quarter, trade at 1954.50, NASDAQ up a point, trade at 37.94, Russell 2000 up a point, trade at 11.84, uh, Goldilocks back a buck right now, it's trading at 13.15, silver down 7 pennies at 20.87, light sweet crude down 22 cents, trade at 106.60, our call in number is 877-927-6648. Give me a call, folks. Happy to field your question. Take your call. Help you and assist you however I possibly can. A quick peek across the globe out here. We'll see that the uh, DAX is off 33 points, about three-tenths of a percent. The uh, FTSE down 16 percent, a quarter of a percent. Over in Asia last night, kind of an interesting market. We'll go take a look at the world markets out here. We had the Nikkei finish up 19 points. I recall looking at it before I closed my eyes, and it was up quite a bit more than that. How about the Hang Seng? Off 389 points, off 1 and 7 tenths percent. Hmm, something to think about. And then we had the uh, Shanghai, kind of, uh, uh, it was down 2 points, so uh, pretty much unchanged out there. So let's, in fact, let's go take a look at the uh, world markets out here. Let's go see what uh, message, if anything, we can find on that. Let me switch over to my other charting uh, package. Of course, I don't know which one's being displayed on the screen right now. Anyways, but let's go take a look at uh, what's going on across the uh, globe out here. So 
First thing is the Nikkei. Yeah, so the Nikkei did finish off of its highs out here. Now, the Nikkei, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing that. You may be listening on your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, perhaps your radio station, and we appreciate that very much. Don't forget, you can always catch the live stream of the show on that smartphone of yours. Just go to the homepage at tfnn.com. Upper right-hand corner, you'll see a button, three smartphones. Click on that. The show will start streaming live to you. Of course, the archive of this show is on Channel 9, and we're looking at the Nikkei right now. You'll see a rectangular, yellow-shaded, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, yellow-shaded area. That really extends from approximately the time period in January, middle of January, end of January 2014, quite frankly, all the way through last week on, uh, looks like uh, Thursday out here, June 19th, when it broke through that consolidation. Why is that important? And the top of the consolidation, right around the level, we'll call it right around 15,300. The bottom of the consolidation level, right around the uh, 13,970-ish area. If you take the difference there... That consolidation pad, when you break a consolidation, what you get is a what's referred to as a measured move. And it says that price ought to travel equal to or greater than that consolidation. Now, when you do break a consolidation, what you really like to see, whether it's a break above or a break lower, is you like to see a confirmation that, in fact, that consolidation is real. How does the market do that? Well, the market does that by just simply coming back and testing the area that it broke out of. Maybe that's what the Nikkei is trying to do out here. Last night it traded up as high as 15,442, closed out at 15,369. It has not tested the uh, bottom of that uh, consolidation. Nice wide-ranging bar out here on uh, June 19th. So the area for us to really be watching inside the Nikkei uh, overnight uh, tonight is probably about the... 15275. We'll give a call 15275. A close back inside that level. Then I don't mean 15274. You know, we've got to give it these are guidelines here. But close back inside. I ah, here here's the here's the deal. Nice wide ranging bar here on the trading session of June 19th. Here's the deal. Close below 15138 the low of that candle session and very likely the break top side was a false break. And then what does that send? It sends a message of actually trapping all the way back down to the bottom of the consolidation in that uh, mm, 13960-ish type area out there. So that's what's going on inside of the uh, Nikkei. Let's go take a look at the uh, Hang Seng out here. Where's the Hang Seng? Here we go. Let's take a look at the Hang Seng. This is the monthly chart. Now, the interesting thing here about the monthly chart of the Hang Seng, you can see a nice little rising price channel out here. This is the one coming back to 2009. Looks nowhere near our rising price channel that we have inside our markets out here, because if you take a look at the 2007 highs inside of the Hang Seng, that'll take you up to a price level of 31,958. You are at 22,804 right now. That is a quite a. Uh, in fact, if you take a look at just simply retracements here, let's go do that from high to uh, low out here. We'll see all that the uh, all the Hang Seng's been able to do is a 0.618 retracement, which takes it up into the 28,000. I'm sorry, 23,850 ish type area out here. So it looks like now this is a monthly chart that we're taking a look at here. Let me take a look at the daily chart, see what's going on inside the Hang Seng. Let me get rid of that pattern out there because that pattern certainly doesn't exist. Of course, we're taking a look at uh, the uh, the. Uh, horizontal bars going across my screen and the uh, numbers out there, those are the primary trading range boundary lines out here. So price ran into the 23,192-ish area last night, really sold off here. Let's take a look at the retracement level that it uh, did here last night from uh, the most recent swing point low, which was uh, back on May 7th, all the way to the high that was put in here on June 13th. So coming into the point three eight two retracement level, 22,741, and doing it with a widish type range Bar. What does that say to us? That says to me, you're probably looking at 22, uh, 22,336. It's point uh, 0.618 retracement, maybe 22,047 as its next move. But it should be able to slice through that 22,741. It's 0.382 retracement like carry gold butter with a nice warm knife out there. As long as we're over in this area, let's go take a look at the FTSE. Let's go see what it is doing. It's traveling in a 430-point consolidation level, which it has not been able to break out of. The top of the consolidation pattern right around the 68, 67 mark out here. Has not necessarily given it up, but what it has done here, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the retracement off of its most recent swing point high. That would take us back to June 9th, down to the low out here on a June 17th. We'll see that it, too has done a 0.618 retracement. 
Interest session, emotional. It's a daily chart that we're looking at on Friday, on Thursday, last week. Tried to punch through it, was never able to close above the point six one eight retracement level. This could be setting up an A to B equals C D to the downside. You say, where would that take us to? Well, the A to B equals C to the downside inside the FTSE, about 66.97, maybe 66.58. Let's go see what's hanging out around there. Probably a little bit of a, a nice Gertley buy pattern. In fact, it is. At the 66.58-ish range, that is what would give you a a nice uh, .618 Gertley buy. Let's go take a look at that. We'll draw that in here. That will go ahead and will uh, form in living uh, colors. What did I say? About 66, uh, 58 or so. I think I did. Right around there. So right around that. Well, I guess it doesn't show up on there. Oh, well. That's your Gertley buy pattern, potential Gertley buy pattern inside of the uh, FTSE. That's so long as it takes out its swing point low from June 17th. It has not tested that area here as of uh, yet, but it has not been able to bust out its consolidation highs. If it does, just like we took a look at it in the Nikkei, I don't think I did the math on it, but inside the FTSE, it's a 400 point move out there. So that's what's going on overseas. A quick peek in at the uh, DAX. Let's go see what signals we have out here inside the DAX. The DAX here on Friday, I see forming a, a shooting star candle out there. That is the opposite of a hammer. That says that resistance should be at 10,050.98, the high of that trading session from June the uh, 20th. Today, trading a bit lower, so confirmation of that uh, shooting star candle. What it needs to do, and if it's going to trade lowers, it needs to, this, this little window, this rising window, this little gap out here has been very strong. Very, very strong. That's a trading session for May 27th. The low there, 98.79.64. That's the level that you really want to watch inside of the DAX. A close inside. You can see it's been tested here one, two, three, four times. And we'll call today so far a fifth test of that area. Well off the session lows. 98.85.96. However, if it does close below 98.79.64, it ought to at least go test the top of the support area. That's the uh, top, the high from May 23rd, 97.79.59. 877 We'll be right back, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
investors. Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, moving in the uh, pre-market out here, we've got uh, GW Pharmaceuticals. Ticker symbol is GWPH. Closed out Friday's trading session at 93.17. And the pre-market out here, last trade just fired off at uh, 96.30. Looks like 100 shares out there. Now, what we know about GW Pharma, took out a B point with volume. The B point out here is a trading session of May 1st. The high out there was 78.08. That was a high of that trading session. It was taken out with big volume. Volume, by the way, on that trading session was, what, uh, 1.5 million shares out there. Taken out with uh, volume on the trading session of June 17, 3.6 million shares. So the one-to-one, -one, A to B equals CD, says uh, 99.22. Uh, it's trading, as they say, in the pre-market here, 96.16. No reason for it to not hit that level. In fact, no real reason for it to not move up to about the 109-ish type area. That is on the GW Farm out here. Another nice sign of strength here. This had a first sign of strength of, uh, on the chart that I'm looking at right now back in uh, April of 2014, April 20. Seconds. So that is the uh, largest dollar mover to the upside here. Uh, right behind them, trailing behind them, Microsystems Inc. It's up about uh, two dollars here in the pre-market. Closed out at ninety. Uh, I'm sorry. Closed out at. Uh, click on it. Oh, help me out here. Sixty-five seventy-seven. Uh, it is uh, trading now right now at about 67.95. Wow, big sign of strength on uh, this thing. Uh, it's uh, that big sign of st strength took place on June 17th. It's a market profile high. Looks like a brand new market profile that uh, shows support at 63.78. Well, heck, it's not worrying about that. It's trying to take out the 68.62 mark in order for it to run higher. That is ticker symbol MCRS. Lululemon having a, a decent morning out here. Closed at 40.23 right now. Trading out at 4170 up about three and a half percent out here. Lululemon trying to get above. This had a uh, quite a gap down. Looks like on the trading session of June the 11th. Yeah, big volume to the uh, downside here. Uh, that did uh, 36 million shares to the downside, but it's inside the gap here. So when it's inside the uh, gap, let me show you what that gap here looks like. If we just uh, expand this thing uh, back. So here's the gap that was created. Trading session, the low of June 11th. The low out there was uh, priced out at 44.08. High of the very next trading session was uh, 38.50 out there. Wide gap. Now, 
It is, as I said, it's trading up a bit here. Inside this, uh, when it's inside the gap, you don't know if it's going to get all the way up to the bottom of the gap, meaning the low of the trading session of June 11. So long as this closes below that level, meaning 4408, that really could be, that's the supply line. That could be the next area of shorting inside of Lululemon. However, today what it's trying to do from a bullish standpoint, it looks like a couple of dojis here the last couple of days, it's trying to get above its unfair high, its resistance level, which is really right around the 4023-ish, 4024-ish type range out here. And that is on Lululemon. To the downside out here, let me see here. It looks like Meritor Inc. M T O R is motoring its way to the downside. It uh, closed at fourteen fifty nine. Last trade here, firing up at twelve seventy five. Thirteen. Oh, so, so it's trading below its unfair low, its support level of its market uh, profile. That's at thirteen sixty nine. So now where is it headed? Let's go see if we go find. Well. This thing broke out with nice volume. So this looks like the area where it's going to go test. It's going to go test its uh, wide price spread accelerated volume trading session from May Day, from May 1st out there. And that low... 1278. If it can hold 1278 uh, today, that'll be the first test of that area. If it can hold it with lighter volume, that would be bullish. Of course, you'd like to see three tests of a, a gap out there. This today looks like it's going to be the uh, first one. If it fails to hold 1278, price area ought to come all the way back to its breakout session. MTOR is the ticker symbol. And if it can come back with light volume into the area of somewhere between 1150 and 1187, might set up a, a nice little buy out there. It's all going to be dependent upon what goes on in today's volume as this here opens and trades lower. Nice sign of strength up here up at the highs. This was on the trading session of uh, June 5th out here. So today's trading session, very important for ticker symbol M-T-O-R I'm going to go ahead and put that on my little list of uh, things to uh, pay attention to. We'll watch how that trades. It's likely to fall off the list pretty quick out here. In the uh, in the uh, futures market, if we take a look at what's going on here, real quick, let's take a look at the ES Mini. The ES Mini running into resistance the last couple of trading sessions. We'll see if it can take that out. It's market profile high. That happens to be, uh, i got to get my cursor out here. It makes it a whole lot easier to do that. And I think I can. Give me a second here. Cursor. Make this thing visible visible now we should be okay if we take a look at its unfair high out here its resistance level right really 1954.75 it's trading 1954.75 as we speak a close above that today would be very bullish otherwise just really running into resistance it's got support at 1934 folks who close below that That'll uh, send us a signal that the market is ready to do a uh, fairly decent retracement. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate 
rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Tech the Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the doll because the doll is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. To the races. We got the Dow down 14 points, straight out of 16, 933 SP off 40 cents, straight at 1962. NASDAQ composite uh, flat, trading at 4368. Russell 2000 up a point or so, trading at 1190. NDX 100 down a dollar, trading at 3801. New York Stock Exchange off eight out here. Leading the charge, the upside is in. in Tegris Energy, T-E-G is the ticker symbol, up a nice uh, 8 bucks and change, up 14% this morning. GW Pharma, up 230 up 2.5%. Actavis, A-C-T, up 1%, up $2. Uh, Microsystems, Micros, MCR. MCRS is a ticker symbol of three percent up two bucks. Lululemon up a buck sixty four. Eaton Corp up a buck fifty four. Three D Systems Triple D is a ticker symbol up a buck sixty one. BHP Billiton up ninety nine cents uh, to the downside here. FMC Corp off about uh, two dollars down about three percent. Meritor Inc Motor the ticker symbol we took a look at that off eleven percent here this morning. Alta Source Residential looks like R E S I is the uh, ticker symbol off six percent this morning. Carmax down a couple percent. Uh, AstraZeneca off a buck uh, down uh, about one percent. China Mobile Limited uh, C H L off uh, two. All right, so where do we uh, begin? What do we want to take a look at uh, out here? Let's take a look at uh, Goldilocks. Uh, let's take a look at gold using a couple of different uh, tools out here. Let's go see what we've got here inside gold. Number one, I'm going to put up the 120-minute time frame chart for gold. That's what's on our screen right now. We're taking a look at the market profiles, which have been working really well inside of uh, gold. Uh, this time frame specifically, from an, certainly from an intraday uh, session, from an intraday time frame out here. If we take a look at it, the uh, resistance level right now inside of gold is 1318. That's using a 120 minute time frame. That's its market profile. Any close above that would be bullish. Anything between the 1318 to 1288 mark is uh, neutral to bullish. 
Okay, neutral to bullish, uh, anything below 12.88. And then on the 120-minute time frame, starts to get bearish from an intraday trading session. So that is the only market, well, it's not the only time frame, but that is on the 120-minute time frame. Uh, you'll see that is the only thing that is uh, bearish, neutral to bearish out there, at least with regard to resistance area. If we take a look at, we double that time frame, we go to a four-hour chart out here. We'll see that's at that 12.88 level. That's the unfair high. That's its market profile. That should become support. So what's interesting is at 12.88 on the 240-minute chart, at 12.88, that becomes resistance. That's the old resistance level. Support on the 120-minute time frame is 12.88. What does that say to us? That says a pullback to 12.88 should be a pretty strong, should find pretty strong support out there, something to uh, think about. Now, how about this? How about the daily chart? Well, the daily chart shows its unfair high at 1277. So I'd have to say between 1277 to 1288, that should be some pretty darn good support if, in fact, gold pulls back to that area. Of course, you say, why would gold pull back to that area after that strong trading session on uh, Thursday, I think it was. Was it not Thursday out here? Let's go take a look at it. Well, at a big, wide-ranging bar, accelerated volume, the whole nine yards, that was on June the 19th. And you say, well, why would gold pull back? Well, I don't know. It could do anything at once. Number one, here is the daily chart for gold. This is a continuous contract that we're looking at. If you come all the way back into the 2012 time frame, October 4th, 2012, what you're going to notice out here is a trend line that has begun. If you go from that high, which is right around the 1797.70 level out here, if we take a look at that and we go all the way back to the most recent high, most recent high where we saw a price get turned back, that was on March 17th, 2014. That's at 13. 9260. Well, interestingly enough, when gold was uh, breaking out, when it had that wide price spread accelerated volume, guess what it ran into? Ran right into that trend line out there. So that's the real trend line to be watching inside of uh, Goldilocks. There was a shorter term trend that most certainly broke, but that was just simply coming back into the March 17th time frame out here. Wide ranging bar. If you also take a look at the stock chart at the bottom of my screen, Happens to be the relative strength uh, indicator out here, the RSI. This is a 14 period. I recommend using the 14 period out here. That helps you to identify overbought and oversold conditions using uh, anything near above the 70 level as an overbought condition, anything near or below the 30 level into the oversold condition. And if you take a look at the last time that uh, gold was up at this trend line here, happens to be the trading session of March 17th. Now, on March 17th here, a little bit of a difference, okay? If you take a look at the trading session on March the uh, 14th, the difference between March 14th and March 17th was that was a bearish reversal signal. Hey, no bearish reversal signal here, at least not as of yet inside of Goldilocks. So that is one differentiation. We did have the relative strength indicator get up into the 70-ish level. In fact, it got up to as high as 73.15. On this trading session back here on Thursday, we saw it get up to 72.33. The mere fact that it's a little bit lower, does that make a difference? Nah, nothing to really be worried about. Just simply overbought is overbought. Oversold is oversold. You know, it's like ordering a steak and saying, I want a medium rare, and it comes out and it's medium. Big difference out there. In any event, uh, of course, I'm not much of a steak eater these days. But I know a difference between medium rare and medium, and I also know a difference between a key reversal session of bearish engulfing and what we do not have right now. You can see the uh, looks like the 200-day uh, exponential moving average. That is the uh, red line going across my screen. That is a red line out there. That's one you can pay attention to. 131040. That has acted as support. What was the low so far this morning? 131040. So you can see how well that has acted as support. So what does that mean? It says a close blow 131040, and I think that 1277, 1288 probably comes into a play. Right now, price just moving sideways, but I will tell you that after a move like we saw here on Thursday, in these last two days out here, that's not the most bullish sign that you would expect. That is, there is no follow-through when you see something like that. You would expect that everybody wanted to jump on board that uh, freight train, and that has not occurred as of yet. So in any event, you'll want to watch that uh, trend line inside of Goldilocks, in my opinion, out here. Let's go see what else we've got inside the uh, markets out here. So that was gold. Let's go take a look at, uh, we took a look at the uh, daily chart. Let's take a look at the uh, resistance levels out here. Let's take a look at, Let's look at, uh, what do we want to look at out here? 
We looked at the ES Mini. Let's go take a look at the uh, NASDAQ and the... Let's go take a look at the, the Dow out here. Let's look at the uh, Dow Futures. We want to look at the Futures contract because we've got all the nice market profiles out here. As the Dow tries to get into that 17,000 level, what is it running into? Well, it's got resistance of its market profile, 16,889. So a close above 16,889 would be bullish. Right now, you'd have to say you're neutral to bearish. It's not able to take out resistance out here. Uh, if you were somebody that was trading a, a consolidation-type uh, pattern, well, you'd be watching what happens. Let's say you were short the uh, Dow. I'm not saying to be short the Dow. I'm just saying if you were, what you'd want to be paying attention to is the price level of 16769 on the futures contract. It closed below that. That would, be, uh, that, would be, uh, that would give you the signal to be bearish or certainly uh, neutral out there, but not bullish on a daily time frame. That's what we're looking at here is the uh, daily time frame charts out here inside of the Dow futures. So 16889 is a key level, key hurdle for it to be able to uh, overcome that area in order to get all out, full blown bullish out there. If you take a look at the NASDAQ futures, NASDAQ futures also struggling to get above their resistance zone. 37.9950 is its magic number right now. It's trading at 37.94. A close above that would be bullish. A close uh, not being able to take that out is it's not bearish necessarily, but it uh, it's letting you know where it's uh, struggling, what hurdle it's uh, struggling to overcome. 3762 is the uh, number to be paying attention to. It's 3762.30, to be exact, is the number to be paying attention to inside of the uh, NASDAQ on the uh, daily chart, the NQ on the uh, daily chart out there, because it closed below that. That just says, hey, do not be bullish on its daily time frame out there. That says be uh, neutral to bearish inside of the NQ. Russell 2000, a little bit of a delay out here, 10 minute delay inside its chart, but it shows 1175.40 is the key number. Close back below that level today, that would be sending out a message because that should be support. 1175.40, again, it's trading right around 1183 or so. Again, with my 10 minute delay out here, I can't tell you whether that's really where it's trading at, but it's right around that vicinity. Number to be watching, 1175.40, and that covers the uh, four futures market uh, indexes out here and their resistance distance and or support levels. Let's go take a look at some of the things that are moving and uh, grooving in the uh, market out here today. What's the uh, best way for me to do that? Let me come over here and do... Uh Let's do this. Let's take a look at some of these things that are moving. So, oh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go take a look at Buffalo Wild Wings. BWLD is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Buffalo Wild Wings trading out at 160.89, well above its uh, unfair high, its resistance area of 152.48. So that's the number you want to be taking a look at. Buffalo Wild Wings right now trying to take out its swing point high from the trading session of uh, March the uh, 21st out here. That has volume of 1.1 million shares out here. Looks like a little hot sauce on it looks like the uh, looks like the anchor bar is getting ready to uh, bust out that is the old buffalo wild wings uh, restaurant out there that is 6 june uh, that is a uh, right now you got volume of uh, 113,000 shares looks like that was uh, 113,000 shares and only 14 minutes of trading. The key here is, can it bust above the high of March 21st? Do it with more than 1.1 million shares out there because that would set up a, looks like a larger A to B equals CD to the upside. You say, where would that take us to? Hey, good question. Let's go take a look at it. Let's take a look at the A to B equals CD that could be sitting up here and looks like it is inside of Buffalo Wild Wings. The A point is going to be the low of February 5th. The B point is going to be that swing we're taking a look at from March 21st. The C point is going to be the low down here on April 28th at 130.69. Looks like it had done a .786 retracement. The one to one A to B equals CD says BWLD wants to get up to 167.45. That's its one to one A to B equals CD. Let's pull this back here. That will go ahead and take it to new all-time high so it looks like uh, looks like it's using the uh, spicy sauce today to the upside out there as it gets above its uh, B point out there so everything right now at the moment for Buffalo Wild Wings Buffalo Wild Wings looks uh, PDG out there pretty darn good let's take a look at uh, Integris Energy TEG is its ticker symbol it's trading out at uh, seventy dollars up uh, nine I'm sorry yeah up nine dollars fourteen percent here this morning what do we have here 
as far as news, uh, Wisconsin Energy, okay, so it's a buyout, so I don't need to spend time there. Wisconsin Energy to buy Integris for a $9.1 billion deal out there. You've got to like uh, being able to buy things for billions of dollars. So let's not spend any time there. Let's take a look at activists. ACT is the uh, ticker symbol, not to be confused with the old ACT test that you might have taken as a, a kid back in uh, High school out there. Let's go take a look at what ACT is doing here this morning. Above its unfair high, its resistance zone of its market profile at 215.47. It's trading at 221.74. It's taking out a a swing point, or it's trying to. Maybe it already has. That's the May 28th swing point. That had volume of 1.7 million shares. The high out there was 216.70. Again, 1.7 million shares. What did it do here on this trading session? 2.9 million shares. Yeah, you got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. The small one out here. Let's take a look at the small one. Let's go ahead and draw that one in. Now, by small, I mean we're going to use the swing point down here on May the 9th as our A point. B point's going to be the swing it took out on May 28th. The C point was a retracement in to test the uh, support level of its unfair low out there. Never broke through it. Just tested it and rejected it. Now on its way to $23.70 to $30.15. Probably thirty fifteen more likely. Or what it's going to try to do is get into the swing point here. From the trading session of uh, February 26th out there, that high is 230.77, 3.6 million shares. If she's moving into there with more than 3.6 million shares, that would be bullish. That would be telling you that uh, it'll go at least test that high of 230.77. That is on activists out there. Let's take a quick uh, peek at something moving to the uh, downside. Let's take a look at what do we got percentage wise. Let's take a look at AltaSource Residential Corp. It's down seven percent here this morning. It's off only two bucks, but let's go take a look at it. It looks like it's got some volume gapping to the uh, downside below its unfair low out here, which it has not traded below that area since its lows back here in the uh, May thirteenth time frame. Looks like you've got some pretty decent volume here this morning already. Three hundred ninety-eight thousand shares. Its swing point low only has one million shares so looks like that's a target here's another area that has held as support another swing point low back on february 26 2014 looks like that low has not been eh, it's been tested so low has been tested once here that had 5.6 million shares that low 2528 it was tested back here it got down to uh, 2508 closed that uh, where was the close 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 2516 2516 versus no, it's still at close below that, but way lighter volume. That was on 1 million shares going against that. Uh, so it was tested on lighter volume. Well, looks like the uh, test is back. Hey, in today's case, if this is able to break through the uh, low and close below, we'll give it this last swing point out here at uh, 2508. That likely sets up an A to B equals CD to the uh, downside uh, out here. Looks like it had a price relative strength divergent pattern. It most certainly did. That had formed after the doji candle on June the 18th, and then you had a lower close to confirm that on June 19th out there. That is on RESI is the uh, ticker symbol. Let me switch over quickly, take a look at the uh, weekly chart, see what this thing is uh, looking like out here. Yeah, needs to hold these. It uh, needs to hold this area here of, uh, and, and, of the 20... 20- 2528 area really needs to hold that on a weekly basis that would set up a larger a to b equals cd to the uh, downside out there if it closes below that that would then take price down to about the uh, 2247 level 877-927-6648 give me a call folks we'll be right back that was off 42 s p down two. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's off 26 points right now. She's trading out at 16.920. S&P pretty much flat, off 70 cents right now, traded 19.62. NASDAQ composite totally flat, 43.69. Russell 2000 also flat, so a very flattish market out here. Now, let me sh share with you something that, and I'm not exactly sure what to make of it. It is unusual. It's very unusual to see this occur out here now. What I've got on my screen is a 30-minute uh, chart. If you're watching this on Tiger TV, you're probably looking at it saying, well, what is it that's so unusual about this uh, stock chart? Well, what's so unusual is, let me show you first where the market actually opened. So trading began right here. Here's the close. I'll put a, a little black line across my screen out here. I just want to show it to you. Maybe I'll illustrate it this way. And here's the actual, well, here's the open of the session uh, last night out here. And again, it's a 30-minute chart that we're looking at. Here's the open. And let's make that a red line. So you see the close in the open. Now for the market to close over the weekend and open back up Sunday evening and have a gap, that's really not that unusual out here. Now I want you to show you that, uh, you know, if you take a look at where the close is, you can take a look at the next tick on a 30-minute chart. I can go down. Oh, let me do that here. I'll just do this. So yeah, that's not unusual. What's unusual, let me just put this here. I'll just put it on a five-minute time frame. Then you'll really see what it is I'm looking at. I'll, I'll show you here. I'll show you first what I'm looking at. And it's this right here. At 3 o'clock this morning, here's where the Euro-Yen closed at. It closed at the, let me just put it to you like this. Here's where it closed at, right up here. So I'll make that a, a red line out here. And on that next trading session, look at where it opened. 
right here. See, if you just look at candles, you may not have caught that little nuance out there. Uh, but my eye visually caught that. I first went back and said, well, was that the open of the market? And, and I knew it wasn't the open of the market because I was looking at the currency pair. I knew that the gap was relatively small. But take a look at that trading session here between uh, 3 and, and 3.30. And can I, better, I can better illustrate illustrate it for you on the five-minute uh, chart out here, I think. Let me just uh, delete everything off there. There you can see it. Okay, here's a trading session right here with the open, then the very next uh, trading session. And that is unusual, and I'm not sure what to make of it. I can tell you from a trading standpoint, if you're trading the uh, euro and you're on the uh, short side, okay, that's cool. Watch the uh, watch what happens, you know, at the bottom of the gap right around the 1.3607 level. And I'm not sure what to make of that. You know, small little gaps that occur, you know, that, that's, I mean, that, that's, that, that can be normal. But this is not normal. It's not normal. It's the same thing that took place, by the way, on the Euro-Japanese yen out here. Here's its 30-minute chart on the screen. Let me uh, just delete this. Uh, well, I'm not going to delete anything. Uh, and you can see it also had a, a gap out here. It also had the a gap, of course, with the, you know, being the Euro-Japanese yen. Um, you know, that makes sense. I don't think we saw the same type of a gap inside the yen. Let's go take a look at it. No, we did not. We did not see uh, any type of a gap like that. So, you know, it was the euro that was the culprit. And I'm just uncertain as to what to make of it. But it is worthwhile noting. It does have some meaning out there. Look, this is a market that is controlled by currency currency pairs out there, and it's why we take a look at the. It's why I take a look at the Euro Japanese yen. Of course, the only reason I look at the Euro Japanese yen is because I've been able to go out there and prove that it correlates to the U.S. stock markets. And that means that uh, it is worth paying attention to and worth noting. So I just share with you that gap. We'll find out what it actually means, if anything, out there. But it's unusual. I can go back through charts on a 30-minute time frame, and you will not see that type of gap other than just simply the uh, market open uh, for the uh, most part. You may see a pip or two, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about something that was more substantial that occurred overnight, and I haven't been able to figure out what that is. Maybe somebody out there will know, and you'll send me an email or you'll post something inside of the uh, den so folks uh, it is a magnificent monday as always i really do appreciate you kicking your day off with us make sure that you uh, make sure you you know what what you what your outcome come up with one or two outcomes that you want to accomplish today put those down on uh, paper i hope one of the outcomes is to join me again tomorrow morning or maybe just in a few have a great monday folks look forward to seeing you soon David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. You're watching Tiger TV.